things have not been looking good for Marvel. They're not looking good for Disney as a whole. One way you can tell is because the company Marvel, which employs a total of 200 actual employees, we're not talking about their independent contractors, but has 200 actual employees just laid off 15 people, which is actually statistically a significant amount yeah. considering they've lowered their output. They're only making one movie this year. So this I mean, I says. didn't know that Marvel Studios only had 200 yeah. actual employees, not thousands contractors. Upon, yeah, thousands upon thousands I'm of contractors. I'm actually like very surprised at that because it just seems like such a complicated... I mean, I guess that means Kevin Feige is doing 200 people's jobs as well. Yeah. But they did note that the 15 people who got laid off at Marvel Studios were lower level production employees. Correct. So they weren't like higher up executives. But it's indicative of what's going on with the company as a whole. They're not, they, they're not exactly cash liquid like they used to be back in the day no. when every movie was making a, bi a billion dollars. Also, they, they do mention that actresses like Tatiana Maslany talked about the absolutely insane budget that they had for She-Hulk season one. And then they're like, we're not giving you a season two. That's, that's absolutely insane. So, well, I mean, they might have been able to justify a second season if the budget for the first one weren't yeah. outlandish, but it's just crazy how expensive they make these projects and they, they look cheaper every time consecutively. Yeah. How uh, do they even manage to make it look that bad? Uh, and it's just funny too, because so, so I watched Terminator Salvation over the weekend and the CGI is just, it's just leagues better than uh -huh. anything that Marvel, and this was made in 2000, it's not great, but it's just leagues better than the absolute slop that ends up on camera. I've been for thinking Marvel more these days. about this. Like, even the B movies of the 90s or the 2000s mm -hmm. that weren't heavily praised, they still stuck to a formula that worked. Mm -hmm. And the problem now isn't that things are too formulaic, it's that the formula that worked got thrown out. Yeah. Like, Hero's Journey. Yeah, yeah, the hero's journey formula completely got thrown out or like thrown in the blender and they feel they have to reinvent it every time with every new project. Well, that's because now they go, they want to get to the deconstruction right away. Yes. They want to deconstruct the character, which is to be fair, in in the in the early days of superhero movie popularity, people complained endlessly about constant origin stories. Now everyone's like, give me a solid origin story that just tells me the journey that this character took from regular person to superhero, mm -hmm. the hero's journey. Now they're not getting They didn't know what they were that. missing yeah. back when they had it. So here's, this it says, uh, it's just, I was just, found this interesting. Marvel Entertainment, I don't know how accurate this is. This is from uh, Zipia, which is, it's like a, a career service okay. thing. So it says, Marvel Entertainment's demographic summaries. Uh, they estimate demographics and statistics for Marvel Entertainment, a database of 30 million profiles. Our estimates are varied against BLS, census, and current job openings for data accuracy. Uh, 200 employees, 32% are women, 68% are men. The most Ooh. common ethnicity is white. Not 50, a good quota. 50, 55%. 20% mm -hmm. are Hispanic or Latino. 10% are uh, black or African American. The average employee at Marvel makes $51,988 a year. You know, the real problem here is they need more black women. That's true. Working at Marvel. That's why the content is suffering. There are too many white men. It says they have a 9.5 diversity score. How? Uh, with a 55% white group how can you have a nice wait i thought you said it was like in the 60 or no it's 68 percent male isn't it yes okay yep. yeah that's how do they get such a good diversity score i don't know pay lots of off. gay people payola yep pay, uh, <laughs> paying them off uh they stay an average of 3.6 years at the company obviously okay. the they're caught they're caught all of the cgi work which is where the majority of the employees come from have you ever watched a movie all the way through to the credits and you just see just an absolute Bananas it's an army of, of people CGI. that it takes yeah. to do it. Yeah, like those are all contractors. And yet it somehow looks worse yeah. with every movie and TV show. And indicative of all this is the fact that it's not just Marvel that's struggling. It's Disney as a whole. Shrek 2 was re-released. Now, of course, the problem here is that Shrek 2 is beloved by the population. Well, of course. Yes. yes. Uh, earned more money on its opening weekend re-release than Turning Red, Soul, and Luca made their entire theatrical run. Combined? Yeah. Yeah. I mean... Oh, this doesn't say combined. 
But oh, may okay. maybe it is. But they, it earned more than all. It of might be. But I noticed as I was looking for a movie to watch over the weekend, I didn't end up going to the movie theater because they're just re-showing old Spider-Man movies. They're showing Shrek 2. They're showing Titanic and just all of these random old movies because probably because of the strike. But yeah, it's the strike. Even the new stuff is just, it's not worth going to see it. A lot of Christopher Nolan movies are being re-released over yeah. the next year. Uh, that's actually kind of interesting because his movies are made to be seen in the theater. So I actually talked to people who were saying like, look, I never got a chance to see Interstellar on IMAX. I want to go see it on IMAX. Depends on the movie. There's a reason But why to go. Shrek 2? Yeah. Like, of all things, why Shrek 2? It's Ogre now for Disney. Yes. Shrek says it's ogre that's for Disney. The, that's what the thumbnail should have been. It's so ogre. It's... We're so back. Um... <laughs> so, so the question is, Marvel seems to be spiraling, making one movie a year. All they've really got to look forward to with television shows is Daredevil Born Again, which I guess is getting me a little bit excited, but not really. It shouldn't. Uh, what does Disney Plus do to fix all of this? Well, I can tell you, they have figured out an absolutely genius way to bring media to the public. It's just to bring back cable. Yes, <laughs> Disney Plus is tr planning to introduce channels onto its service that will function the same as old school TV channels with different channels for different genres like Marvel and Star Wars. So you can just turn on the Star Wars channel and it will just stream yeah. constant Star Wars content, but mostly the stuff that Disney has made, which is the stuff you don't want to see. There's an interesting idea here, because there's a whole genre of memetics that was dedicated to, like, the person who makes food for, like, they make all their food and then they spend an hour trying to figure out what to watch on Netflix. Can't think of anything. This then, takes the decision anxiety yes. out of the equation. Because right. basically, like, like, what it is is, like, you make your food and then you're in a race against time to find something to watch before the food gets cold. So you just have to sit there and then eventually just settle on something. Then you just watch something <laughs> that you don't like and you eat cold food. Yes. So how do you feel now? But this is just weird to me because it feels like a rehashed version of autoplay on netflix now i know you said that's algorithmic so yes. it's going to autoplay something it thinks you would like if i'm watching a spy this thriller, is just the same for everyone different yeah so uh what it says here is, is it reflects the growing popularity of free ad supported streaming fast streaming which i'll be fair like i've been watching a lot of roku tv is that are uh, these me, channels? The anti, me, the anti ad person, has been watching a fair amount of Roku TV. Yeah. So, so are these channels going to have ads then? Uh, so it could like a normal TV channel would have commercial breaks. So are they going to have that? I mean, really, these are just commercials for Disney content. Yeah. Uh, right? then what's What's funny about this is like I was looking at this pie chart the other day that says. When you, when you account for like uh, paid streaming services and free streaming services, the, the Disney Plus like market share isn't all that much higher than Tubi, which is the one that, um, uh, who, was it the, who was it that bought Tubi? He basically sold his Disney, sh Warren Buffett like sold his oh, Disney really? shares and bought Tubi. And they're all, like, and it paid off for yeah, him. Yeah, and it paid off for him. Like, and we talk about spades. Tubi as a joke, but mm -hmm. like Disney Plus is the joke. Yeah, because, right? Because uh, they the... have all the brand power and all of that IP, and it's not paying off for them. Like people keep on leaving the platform. And uh, in in the price is going up. So you know your ad tier, what you pay for your ad tier now is what you used to pay for the ad free version in a lot of cases. And the prices just seem to double every couple of months. And people are getting mm -hmm. sick of it. And we're in a with Bidenomics as they call it, and we're in a recession. How are you going to have nine streaming services in this economy? Who can afford mm -hmm. to do that? Well, not a whole lot of people. So. I'll be fair to Disney that like the people who are going to have Disney Plus are going to have it anyways because they're they over identify with Disney anyways. Yeah. So it's like it's kind of like why why do the reviews always seem to be good from the audience side? Because anybody going to see a Disney movie probably is such a diehard Disney fan now. It's a simp for a Bob Iger. They're just going to like it. No, like feed me the slop and I'll <laughs> tell you it's good. Basically. Yeah, I think that, like, maybe the Hollywood executives, they were making good content for a while, like, they were actually trying, and people were liking it, but then once they started putting out shit content and people were still liking it, they were like, oh, like, we can just get away with not putting in any effort now. Like, yeah. this is awesome. <laughs> um, but I think that 
now that Disney Channel essentially is back, but like in a different form, I really want them to get like the Marvel actors to do the the mouse ears thing with the wand. I want them to get like Liam Hemsworth to to do the hi i'm liam hemsworth and you're watching disney plus like they used to do with the Uh, 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 uh. i want them to do that and they'll do a rainbow wand was it okay so maybe it was rupert murdoch i thought it was warren buffett but it could have been okay it was one of those old rich guys okay they bought two you know the type and and turned it into a bunch of money. Thank you for correcting me if I'm if I'm wrong on that one. But fast service look, Freebie is very big for Amazon Prime right now. Like I don't even know why you would need to watch Freebie because isn't the whole point of having Amazon Prime usually for the packages anyways? You know what's messed up? When you go on Amazon Prime, um, you can't even filter for what free like free content is on the platform you have to just dig for it there isn't like you can't type free up top no you can click on rent or buy you cannot filter for free content at least not that i could tell i was literally checking the other day amazon prime is the absolute word like whoever designed it's terrible the the, like the interface for amazon prime hates jeff bezos but it's intentional i think it's intentionally bad you'll click on a show and realize you didn't click on the show. You clicked on just the third season mm-hmm. of the show. Mm-hmm. And you're like, why would I start and then you're like, season three? Why isn't the menu for the other season right here? And there are shows where it's like, I told everybody that I was watching the show Jeremiah, which is on Roku. And I was like, oh, it's on, it's on Amazon Prime. I'll just watch it there because then there's no ads. Only season two is on there. Mm-hmm. Season one you have to buy. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's they do insane. This, they do this on purpose. And uh, but it's it's not just that. Another thing that I noticed that like at least with Roku. So when we started watching it, show would have like three ads. I'm like, okay, three ads, thirty seconds. I can do that. It's like a minute and a half. It's like they let you, they, they it like knows how many episodes of something you've watched, and then the ads finally go up and up, and then finally you're at the five ads. The per, more invested you are, yeah, the more they can get away with. I can't. They're prove so this. sinister. I can't aren't they? prove this. Maybe I just got lucky and just those first few episodes just happen to only have three ads. I personally think they're out to get me and they're just trying to ruin my life. Or what it is, is they've heard our podcast. The algorithmic overlords over at Roku have heard our podcast and talk about my one man jihad against ads. Okay. And decided to turn me into an ad viewer. Someone commented on this saying, what if we just combined all the streaming services together and each service had their own channel? What would we call that? Echoing my statement, which is that they should all just get eaten up by a conglomerate so that I can have less decision to make. You can do that on Amazon Prime, though. You can buy channels on Amazon Prime. All of them, though? I mean, Not good, all of them, but a good amount. A good amount. You can get them. HBO. Stars, Showtime. Um, but some of them are exclusive to those platforms, so it's still not... I imagine Disney the same. does. I don't. I don't know if Disney does that. On yeah. That, but the Disney would probably not. Um, but. I want Net, Hulu, Paramount, Max, Disney. It's all just the bundling in cable again. It's just come full circle all the way around. Where's the X streaming service? When's that going to be a thing? The, the the Elon streaming service. Yeah. It's just Tucker Carlson. <laughs> it's just going to be Tucker, and then maybe Don Lemon will show up at some point. And Roseanne. Don't yeah. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.